Welcome to this demonstration entitled Conjugate Heat Transfer in a Heat Sink Using ANSYS Fluent. Okay, here you see a heat sink inside of a fluid box. Um, the heat sink is made of copper and we're going to be flowing air past the heat sink in order to cool it. The air boundary conditions are uh, 1 meter per second flow at 20 degrees C and the heat dissipated is 1 watt on a 90 millimeter square footprint which is the bottom of the heat sink. Okay, so the first thing we do is generate a fluid flow fluent analysis system by clicking and dragging. Now we will create a geometry, so right mouse click and do a new design model or geometry. Here is the design model or interface. Now we do file import external geometry file and we will import this heatsink step file. Then click generate and there it is. Okay, so now the only thing we need to do is create a single multibody part by highlighting both parts and say form new part. Now you have one part and two bodies. So now we go back to workbench and we open Mesher. And here's the meshing interface. So now we highlight mesh and we are going to expand the sizing. We're going to do fine. Sorry, we're going to do proximity. We're going to do fine. For the relevant center, we're going to do for assembly meshing, we're going to select cut cell. And then for the growth rate, we're going to select 1.05. Now we right mouse click and do generate mesh. Okay, so here is your cut cell mesh. Let's look at the statistics. Let's look at the mesh quality using mesh metric of skewness. You can see that the maximum skewness is 0.84226, so that's pretty good. Okay, so now what I like to do is assign name selections. Create name selection. Let's call that a fluid. Spin this. In the heat sink, I'm going to make a solid. Okay. Now let's do the surface boundary conditions. This is my inlet. This is the outlet. Let's have these faces be symmetry boundary conditions. Now let's look at the underside. This wall we're just going to make adiabatic. And this is the surface where we're going to be assigning the heat flux. So we'll just call it walls heat flux. Okay, and here are your name selections. So I think we're good to go. So let's go back to workbench, update the mesh. Get the green check mark means everything is correct. Now double click on setup. That'll launch Fluent. So since we're doing heat transfer, it's always good to run double precision. We're going to run parallel on four CPUs. Now click OK. And this launches the Fluent interface. Okay, so now let's define the physical models that we're going to use. We're going to be turning on the energy equation. And we're going to be running turbulent. So we're going to select K epsilon realizable. Click OK. Now for materials, we're going to be using air. For density, we're going to be using incompressible ideal gas. And for viscosity, we're going to be using the Sutherland three equation model. Click OK. Now going into the fluent database. For solids, we're going to look for copper. And there it is. So we're going to copy and close. OK. Now we're going to be assigning material properties to the fluid and the solid. So the fluid is air. Let's close this. And the solid, you know, the default is aluminum, but we're going to make it copper. So there you go. Now let's assign boundary conditions. For the inlet, we're looking at 1 meter per second. Temperature is 20 degrees C, to, so 293.15 degrees Kelvin. For turbulence, we're going to be using intensity and hydraulic diameter. So let's call the intensity 3 and the hydraulic diameter 0.05. 
for the outlet. Let's do the same. This is this only defines the backflow um, temperature boundary condition. Density and hydraulic diameter. We're going to be doing the same as the inlet, 0.05 meters. Okay. Um, adiabatic walls are the thermal boundary condition by default, but for walls heat flux, excuse the typo, we're going to be using a heat flux. The heat flux is one watt uh, divided by uh, 90 uh, square millimeters. And in MKS, in wall, it's sorry, in watts per meter squared, that is 111,011.11. So click OK. And now our problem is fully defined. So let's initialize the solution using hybrid initialization. And that's done. And let's just run the calculation for a thousand iterations. So the solution hit the default convergence criteria in about 150 iterations. So let's click OK. Now let's do some quick post-processing here. So let's look at some contours of temperature. Before I do that, I'd like to turn off the lights. Um, get the mesh. Let's um, activate all the walls as outlines and edges. So that's what it looks like. Now let's do um, Turn off global range and let's turn on all the walls and let's do 40 contour levels. So that is, that's what it looks like. You can see that the maximum temperature um, is 325 Kelvin or about 52 degrees C. You can zoom in a little bit. Okay. And now what I, what I would like to do now is look at the heat flux so there you can see that the maximum heat flux occurs as you would expect the leading edges of the heat sink and that the efficiency of heat transfer drops off pretty substantially as the boundary layer grows inside of the heat sink. This concludes this presentation. Thanks so much for watching.